It's Thursday morning. You know what that means. It is AEW review time. We got a lot to cover. We got three championship matches. We have a killer promo. And you know what? Are there too many free agents out there? And if there are too many, does AEW even need them? This is TSL. What down they vote? <laughs> And welcome to, or welcome back to Total Spot Fest Live. I am JJ Brownlee, being accompanied as I am every time by my co-host, Mr. Jamie Faulkner. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, we 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 do not have our young boy. We sent him away uh, th- this this morning. He had to go. Uh, he had to get his penance done. So uh, we yes. sent him to get some dry cleaning and whatnot. Nah, he yes. he. Yeah, he, he, he had a dog issue, so he couldn't... Re- anyway, ho- hope your dog's doing better. Uh, we'll punish you when you get back. Yes. So- <laughs> his, his, dog, his dog's name's Tyson after his favorite wrestler, Tyson Kidd. Oh, yes. That's, that, that is factual information. And since he's not here to rebuke it, stamped. But we do want to thank you for joining us. This is Total Spot Fest Live. Uh, this is our AEW review. We're going to cover last night's dynamite the post blood and guts dynamite as we inch closer and closer to double or nothing lots of stuff going on with that we got a couple topics uh we're going to get to as well going to talk about free agency uh, and a few other things AEW related so thank you for joining us once again if you are watching us on youtube uh give us a give us a like down below it definitely helps us out give us a comment if you have any questions if you want to give us a shout tweet at us at Total Spot Fest. You want to holler at Jamie, it's at jfaulkner56. I am at jmoney1536. And don't even worry about the young boy. He's not even here. Who cares? So <laughs> we're, we're going to get right into it. Yeah, we're, yeah, I just love it. He's not here to defend himself. It's going to be so much fun. We can. I know. I know. Uh, uh, under the bus. All right. So let's talk about Dynamite. So as you said, three title matches, killer promo, some other things. Jamie, start us off. Okay, so we'll just start start off as AEW always starts with, with a match. With a match. <laughs> Damn, that's, I always match. get that wrong. Yeah, wrong shows. Um, ah. So it actually was a pretty damn good match. It was... It was- it's better than I thought it was going to be. Yes, it's Yuji Nagata, the Ageless Wonder, Blue Blue Justice, <laughs> uh, versus John Moxley for the IWGP United States Championship. And... Again, if you are a fan of Japanese wrestling, then you really enjoy this match because it felt old school Japanese strong style. Oh yeah. It was oh, yeah. really good. Like I and, and here's the thing, like old school strong style, like five years ago, seven years ago strong style has a near and dear place to my heart. Because yeah, Shinsuke Nakamura, all those guys who were in the strong style. And you have this new breed strong style who doesn't sell as much. And it just drives me nuts. Yeah. This definitely had everything I wanted. It is it's a very nice homage. Moxley did re- really good with it. I thought both of them looked good. Um, I'm not going to get into a whole lot of moves because there's a lot of technical wrestling. And this was probably the most technical mm-hmm. I've ever seen John Moxley, to be honest with you. Yeah, and they did. They did it in Japanese uh, in IWGP rules, so twenty second count outs and yeah, you know, which is which is which is very refreshing. I, I I enjoy that. If you're gonna if this Forbidden Doors open, you're gonna pull in this New Japan. You're gonna have New Japan title matches, bringing more of that in. For one, it'll help get people over to New Japan a little bit, but I think it helps just strengthen that relationship. I like it. I I like it when they. Don't just you know fit something into a mold. They kind of let it let it be. That was cool. Yeah, and and honestly, to your point too, I think it was very tactical with y- using Yuji Nagata because you called it out before oh, that yeah. <laughs> he's been in the states before. We've seen him on WCW back in the day. He's a name that people have at least heard of. Yeah. Like he's not an Okada level guy right now, where everybody's like, "Ooh, Okada, Okada, Okada." Right? You know, but he's had that that presence so the old school wrestling fan would be like i've heard that name and so they have some familiarity with them so it's a very very smart pick by them because it does have a little bit of that name recognition right Um, because his name is not near as big as it was 
Like, let's just be honest. Well, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. But I mean, they, 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 they and uh, the Shivani. I think Shivani or one of them made made reference to the the matches he had when he was back in WCW, and that was a pretty legendary uh, feud that he had going on in Japan and also spilling over into the states. So, you know, overall, it was fine. It was good. It wasn't like the most stellar high star rating of match but i don't think it's meant it's not meant to be it, i think it's it definitely is more of a hook i believe yeah yeah and and this is this again goes kind of against what aw's done in the past where they usually have a banger in the beginning and then they have solid matches there out and then they right, end with a banger. Like they go like the yeah. be- reverse bell curve basically yeah you know? this one was a very solid match not a banger i will definitely mm-hmm. call it that um yeah. moxley retains Shocker. I know yeah, he, everybody's he was going to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so afterwards, Nagata and Moxley, you know, shared respect for each other. I thought that was really cool. Um, oh, fun- uh, by the way, did you, mm-hmm. you what did you think about uh, Moxley coming out to Wild Thing? I thought that was hilarious. Did I, he do I that in Japan or is that is that a Tony Khan oh, and spending money again thing? I don't know. I don't I, I, I don't, don't think he does Wild Thing usually because yeah, I, I, I yeah. So Tony Khan, he he got the money. So whatever, just buy all the rights. <laughs> yeah, come out to Wild Thing, old school Wild Thing. Like he he's Ricky Vaughn, you know. Uh, I I want him to come out with like glasses with the skull one day. That oh yeah, that would be amazing. Because he be basically amazing. wears the jacket. <laughs> yeah, Moxley. <laughs> if you if, if someone get this, someone get this to Moxley. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna tweet this to him. Moxie, I love your new entrance music. You better come out to, w- with the glasses. And if you cut the uh, the, the sides of in your head, yes, you yes. are my you are my god. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so right after that, um, Ortiz and Inner Circle, um, you know, they cut a quick promo. They they want a rematch uh, or else, yeah, you know, and they're going to confront them that tonight at the uh, coronation. <laughs> and they're gonna turn it into a feud roll. I was like, "Oh my goodness!" Okay. There's a lot, lot of murder references, a lot of death references in this whole feud. Which love it or hate it, yeah, yeah, and it's what Sa- Santana wasn't there because he got arrested for using a fork. I thought that was a pretty <laughs> funny. <laughs> that was funny a, line. That, that was a good one. Um, right after that, again in typical AEW fashion, match promo promo. Here comes out Cody Rhodes, and he talks about Anthony Gogo. He, he yeah. goes on this big patriotic, like I'm American. Yeah. Uh, and I'm was, like, uh, before before you talk about it, because this is this is being built like a son of a bitch, right? He's yeah. Got a special announcement. Special announcement. And I think you told me at one point in time you thought it was going to be that he's going to announce the 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 uh, uh, the uh, um all full capacity. all all full capacity. Or all, I was thinking maybe it could be uh, all out. You know, they're going to announce maybe where it's going to be since they pr- just before that they announced like you know the return to touring. What mm-hmm. did you think as the night before he actually got into it? He was going to announce for for real. Yeah, what I've honestly thought he was going to announce because they said it was going to be for this. I'm like, okay, he's going to announce full capacity, and maybe he's going to announce a new championship or something like, you know, something like that. Like it's going to be a like big company, company announcement, like not a yeah. Cody Rhodes announcement. Yeah. I thought it was definitely beyond the bounds of Cody Rhodes. I thought so too. Okay. I, no, I didn't think that specifically, but I thought it was going to be something related to all out. He's going to announce Vegas for all out or whatever. Yeah. Well, everything kept saying a huge announcement about, Double or nothing. Was it about? I missed that. Yeah, about double yeah. Or and they Whatever. said it like four or five times before he got on there too. So I was like, okay, okay. okay he's all getting right, out. All right, so I, I just want to see before you get into it because that, that's yeah. what we thought before it happened, guys. And then this happened. Yeah. Well, he says Tony Khan's already told everybody. Everybody knows it's gonna be full capacity. So he just blew that out. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then he goes off about Anthony Gogo. And he talks about how he comes to the United States and all this stuff. I'm not gonna get into the whole thing. It, it was, was a, it was it started off like really deeper than it should have about America. You know, we sometimes hate yeah. each other, love each other, this and that, and our elections and this. And I'm like, where the f is he going with this? I know. I was like, can you get to the point? Because I feel like you're <laughs> a freaking circle right now. Click, click, like click, there click, is no click, point click, coming. Click, click. Yep. So basically, at double or nothing, he's gonna face Anthony Gogo, but he's not gonna <sighs> face him as the american nightmare oh no and he got a little teary-eyed about this and i thought that was kind of cool for one night only 
he's going to face him as Cody Rhodes, the American Dream. And I really wish he had said American Dream. You know, <laughs> so if he if he comes out in anything <coughs> other than polka a dots. black and yellow polka dotted singlet, uh, I need with I need white I boots. Need, I'll be pissed. I need polka dots. I don't know if they can get it because the WWE probably owns it, but I want the doot doot doot. He's just a common man. Oh, dude, he came working out hard. In, in, oh my god. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Be, I think I think WWE owns that though. I don't think they're gonna get it. But still, ah, yeah, yeah. cool, yeah. cool, bro. Yeah, yay! <laughs> All right. So then after that, we get a hell of a match. <sighs> this match exceeded I my expectations. Me, same, same right Blew here. This guy the water. Did not think it was gonna be anywhere near as good as it was because this was good. Yes, so this was the second championship match of the night, and this was SCU versus the Young Bucks. Young Bucks came out with their usual pack of cronies. They had Brian <laughs> Cutler, their young boy, their which I like. I will have to say this for for officialness: they had their young boy well after we had our own young boy. Uh, they I just want to make sure yep. everybody knows that. Yep. yep. So. Yeah, where is he? Where's our young boy again? Oh, that's right. He's picking up my dry cleaning. No. <laughs> um, so anyway, this match had everything you want. Don Callis was on ca uh, commentary, and Don Callis is in typical he's, he's Don Callis gold. form. Gold. Every time. Uh, and then him and Shivani. Oh, they oh my it. goodness. They they're, hate each other so heat, much. Their heat is great. Their heat is so good. <laughs> so <sighs> this match had tons of moves. Spot fest. This oh, had this, this spots was everywhere. By far. Um, you know, one of the big things, Daniels got busted wide open, and he literally, like, bled like nobody I've ever seen. Like, he was anemic. Like, it was just coming out in droves. Like It was it was like trauma, like blood, you know? Yes. like Like Toxic Avenger, just boo, doo, doo. It was flying. And if you've not seen Toxic Avenger, you've probably have seen Kill Bill, that style. Just everywhere going. Yep, kill Bill. yep, yep. And if you guys see, okay, I'm, I'm not a horror movie guy, but Toxic Avenger is hilarious, and I just love. So <laughs> I I love me trauma movies. Trauma, trauma movies, movies are, are great because they're they're just so ridiculous. Ferocious female freedom fighters about underground women's wrestling. They bought this movie. It was in English. It was like uh, Korean or whatever. It was terrible. So they just dubbed over the whole thing. <laughs> That's yes. it. Go check it out. It's it, it's horrendous, but horrendously great. Anyway. Yeah. Tangent over done. Big Sorry. fan of a good bad movie. Oh um, yeah, absolutely. So, so it ends up there was interference when Kaz had Nick rolled up uh, by uh, one of the Good Brothers. Uh, the one who always tries to catch yes, catch his boy. <laughs> um, so there there was a couple big spots that I really liked. I know. It. So Matt got into the corner. And I knew you were going to go there first. <laughs> that was fantastic. I'm sorry. So, I'm getting ahead of you. But yeah. yeah I know. So he gets in the corner, does his foot stomp, and then Bef he looks. Oh, set, set, set up a little bit. So, so before that, he had looked back when Daniels was on the ground. Because they did a whole promo about them being such close friends, right? He looked yeah. back on them was on the ground and kind of was like looking over and like for a second had some sympathy. And then yeah. a little bit when he got in the ring and then right before this happened, he like, had some sympathy. And, and then, so pick it up. He's in the corner. Yeah. So also they talked about this on Being the Elite. If you have not watched Being the Elite, you need to because this will fill in the gap of this moment. So... He uh, Nick or Matt gets in the corner, starts stomping his foot like like a, a certain famous wrestler, right? And well, then he well, Daniels is on his knees in the middle of the ring. Daniels <laughs> is on his knees in the middle of the ring, and he looks at him and goes, "I'm sorry, I love you." With a tear, with a tear, <laughs> and it super kicks him. <laughs> All of Sean kick out. And I was yeah, like, oh. all of Sean Michaels to Ric Flair to any of you who have no idea what we're talking about, and if you don't, shame on you. But yes, is <laughs> arguably the greatest retirement match of all time. Like, as I will give as, it as much yeah. as much as Ric Flair should not have been wrestling that late in his life anyway. Yes, it yeah. was. And then he continued to wrestle after he got retired. Oh yeah, Whatever. oh yeah. Uh, uh. So anyway, so that happened. There was a, a moment where Daniel's trying to go for a BME and he totally botched it, 
and he like jumped and fell down and they're like oh he can hardly do anything because he's lightheaded which might have been accurate because of how much blood he lost he lost a lot of blood then he went for a b he hit the bme one two kick out um then cutler um uh, hits uh uh, C, uh, the cold spray, the CD spray, or whatever. On yeah, it's the, like it's like the muscle, like you know. Yeah, he throws it to muscle. Matt, and he they spray um, uh, Daniels in the face, and they throw it at him. And then, <laughs> yeah. yeah, then and they then. do the BTE trigger on him. One, two, three. The Young Bucks retain, and SCU is no longer a tag team. Um, this might have been Daniels' retirement match. It very well probably was that's my guess he's moved in. he's he's actually if, if, for those of you who don't who aren't aware christopher daniels is the head of talent relations for aew a lot of these guys the older guys have official backstage roles jericho is one of them he's taken an, an expanded backstage role um but yeah he's he said before he knows he's not going to be a main eventer anymore he's not going to be in the limelight he knows it's the twilight of his career He's just come to grips with it. He's 50 years old, and he's like, I'm good with it. you know. So he's probably retiring. You forgot one spot I wanted to say, because Kaz pulled out a Styles Clash. Caught Matt in midair. Oh, yes, and they called it the Styles Clash. And they too. called it. And I love that, because call, call – I understand. Different companies. Call the move what it is. Just like it's a goddamn unprettier – they called it a Styles Clash. I loved it. It was and it looked good too. So good. it looked really good when he caught him. And I'm like, oh, and like I was sitting there. And I'm like, is he going for a Styles Clash? It, I was like, he, he can't be going for a Styles Clash. Yeah, and then he I know. Right? I'm like, oh shit, a Styles Clash. <laughs> so yeah, it was so, really good. Then yeah. after that, they cut to the show both Daniels and Kaz in the middle of uh, the ring. They they embrace. Everybody gives a big cheer. That was a really nice thing. They didn't give you the the audience the reaction send, uh, but you know yeah. that, that it was it was a good pop um it's just sad to see them go but again it, it, it's time and kaz is a ridiculous st he's still in the prime he's been that way ever since he was in tna 12 or 13 years ago he, he is, is ridiculous he is so good he needs his own run and this is really the best way to go about it you know they ended yeah. it in a way that's not detrimental to their character so mm -hmm. he can go forward and they've already kind of cut you know, they definitely cut Scorpio Sky off and he's doing his heel thing. So it's good for Cass. I, yeah. 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 No, I, I totally agree. So after the the embrace, they cut to Christian Cage and he has an open <laughs> contract tomorrow and he calls out Next Taz. Um, so he calls out Taz and he's like, Oh, you can't go. I can send out any of your people by themselves, and I can beat them. Blah blah blah. I don't care who you send. Uh, then he's right when he starts talking to him about like the casino battle royale. Here comes Matt Seidel, and the only thing that was memorable of the whole thing was he basically is like, you know, you don't want to slip up or you don't want to you know, fall or fall, fall again or falter again or something <laughs> of that nature. Like basically yeah. just making fun of how he fell. Making fun of how his entrance one. into AEW. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> they set up a match for Matt Seidel versus Christian Cage next week on Dynamite. I do not care. Eh, it's it's yeah. going to be a technical match. And it's going to be boring as hell. Probably, but it's whatever. You, not every match on every, every, every night's a banger. You got to have, you got to, you got to have, you got to have, you got to have a filler. And we had, we had a filler. Tonight, unfortunate who was in that filler, but yeah, it it's definitely I this is definitely going to not be the it's going to be the time to go get some get a snack match. <laughs> yes, for sure, and you'll Which probably have ten it's minutes because it, it's like yeah. So the next match should have been a banger, and yes, it, it ended up not being because they had to call an audible. So I'll get to that. Okay, okay. So, Orange Cassidy with best friends coming out to the Pixies. Where is, where is my mind? Um, I always have to call that out. And yeah, Pac with every Death time. Triangle. And again, I don't know if you triangle. notice this. Ray Phoenix is wearing my wearing shirt. a white Lucha Brothers I shirt. That I damn absolutely. shirt. <laughs> like, that's my shirt. I want that shirt so bad. Well, I'll, have you been to Republic of Lucha? By the way, Republic of Lucha. Hey. Oh, sorry. I'm repping hey. the Empire. Hey empire today i got my lucha bros on but yeah anyway i'll i'll keep an eye i am it was you know it's funny their store probably has that shirt sitting on a shelf 
Mm-hmm. But that's also what three thousand miles away from us. <laughs> yeah, in California. Yeah, it's ridiculously far. Yeah. Away. Well, you'll, one day you're gonna get that shirt. I guarantee yes. it. And I will rejoice and be so excited. Um, all right. So this match had a lot. It actually did have some good spots. It started off really good. But where it went wrong was the sunset flip powerbomb onto the uh, outside. Yes. When, when Pac did that. Uh-huh. That's where Orange Cassidy got hurt. Because the original oh, scripted plan okay. was it was supposed to be a 20-minute draw. And okay. then And then after that, you know... Uh, Omegos had come out and they were going to do the exact same thing that they got it off because no one won and then they were going to announce a triple threat. Well, since since that happened, he was out of it. Aubrey called an audible. Omega was in on it. Omega hits Pac in the back of the head. Um, with uh, with the belt, yeah. With the Cal comes out and like distracts them, talking about how they're both yeah. losers. And yeah, this yeah. And so that. so Aubrey that, didn't it see did, that did feel weird. Now that you mention it, like. Like yeah, okay, I get it. it. It felt very WWE, you know. Like it was it just very was not, WWE. Yeah, yeah, like it felt it got thrown together last minute. Because <laughs> it, it did. Yeah. Um. So, so ref Aubrey didn't see it. Double count out. Nobody won. Um. And then we get Omega saying he's got the night off and all this. And then here comes Tony Schiavone and goes, "Hey, champ, you know, whatever, champ." And he's like, "Don." <laughs> like, I love how he's just like, it's, it's the subtleties. Like, this, yeah. this is what's great about AEW. You have these little subtleties. They do long term, st- this long form storytelling, and some of the idiosyncrasies that are just kind of like little things that are there. That if you put them all together after like a full, you're like, oh my God. Yeah. It's just, I love it. Yeah. So, right when that happened, too, oh, actually, it happened right before that. I missed it. Um, a little small segment where Moxley and Kingston just destroy the elite's locker room. Yeah, they cut they, they cut away from that. they cut away from the SEU to they destroy they went to the two of them destroying the locker room. But yeah, anyway. yeah, it was nah. moral right. story. It's triple threat for uh, the title at double double at, or uh, nothing. Double or nothing. Yeah. So, so we have we have that. Um, after that, um, they go to the elite in their locker room, and Gallo's upset about the tornado that went through. Bucks cut a promo on the Varsity Blondes. Who cares? Um, but then they go to Adam Page, and this felt weird. Oh, they also challenged uh, Moxley and Kingston to a match at Double, at Double or Nothing. Or nothing. That's right. That's right. They did do that. Yeah, this did. But at, at, at Hangman, yeah, go to Hangman. Because Hangman it did feel just weird. felt weird because you have Marvez talking to at, um, to Hangman talking about how he dropped in the rankings and how does he feel about it and of course the um, Dark, Dark Order. Order's like oh no you're fine you're fine and they're like being super supportive and he just had this weird look on his face yeah and then, like he was just like kind of annoyed that they were talking for him I I don't know it just felt a little oh, weird can I yeah of course so here is my take on it. Because I, this is definitely breaking the mold of what is normally happened with him in, in the Dark Order, but I, I think I see the reasoning and I see the path here. I think I see what's going on because a couple of weeks ago, you know, they because they've been doing this like every week here. They're kind of like Dark Order filler for the week as they go back and they do an interview with Hangman in the Dark Order, and now that Hangman's like officially hanging out with the dark order not officially but hanging now he's they're officially friends right they're they're not being the elite together doing the whole thing right um he's you know they're they're basically groupies of him and at first he's just kind of like ah play it off play it off and he kind of accepts it but he doesn't want to talk to anybody else so he runs away from interviews and he's slowly kind of getting more confidence in it I believe he's morphing into the leader because you could tell because his tone started that way and then it ended very different. He called out uh, Brian Cage for yes. attacking him, jumping him, and calls him out to a one-on-one match with nobody else in it there whatsoever. And a double or nothing. You could, I could see that kind of that you know the growth happen with that if you look if you t- if you step it back and look at it over time. I think that. He's going to take over what we've been calling and wanting for. I think he's finally going to get into that position. Probably going to be another three, three, four weeks here, but he'll f- they, like shape up the Dark Order, get them to stop being so goofy and being more serious ish, 
and be their leader. That's to me what that's to me that's my prediction. That's what I feel is going with this because I mean, that, maybe I'm projecting. That's a, that's a slow burn I can buy. I would like to see the Dark Cowboy. The yeah. Dark Cowboy would be an absolute perfect thing cuz yeah. he, like I even wrote down John Silver even looked at him like, "Yeah, dude, like you saw it in his face like yeah. he got behind what he said cuz the delivery was great like you know, you don't have to send out your guys, whatever. And he says, Ricky Starks, uh, got, uh, bless you, because Ricky Starks has got a fractured neck from that <laughs> spot that he did with him. You're right. So he feels right. bad about that. Um, but, yeah, like, called him out one-on-one, nobody else, mm-hmm. none of Taz's boys. Yeah. And I, that will be a good match. And I'm that, looking forward yeah, to it. Cage versus Page, yes, please. Give me more of that. I mean, for sure. Straight up, definitely. I mean, but – that's maybe I'm projecting. You guys, let me know. Give me let's know down below. Give me a tweet. Do you think that Hangman's making the transition to be the Dark Cowboy leader number sixty nine, the leader of the Dark Order? What do you think? Point oh eight. He's gonna be point oh eight. Point, point oh eight would be point oh eight would be perfect. All right. So that that that's what I think. You guys, let us know. Give us a tweet. <laughs> give us a comment. So next is the M- MJF comes out with the pinnacle for the pinnacle coronation, and this is where. <laughs> Me as a total MJF mark will say this is the killer promo of the night. No, it is definitely it not. Is not. Not even close because the one after it blew it way out of the water. So it is one of their better promos that has been out there. But anyway, so the Pinnacle comes out. They just just talk a bunch of shit about how great they are. I'm not even gonna get into it. <sighs> T- Tully gets some watches. Yay! Yeah, they got rocks. Then there's a horn. MJF. MJF has a crown on. And yeah, they've got these was like, hokey. it was, it was, it was, it was, thank you. It was hokey. It was not M- MJF can be one of the best promo men in all of wrestling. This is not an example of it. This was very cut and paste. I felt well at the very end. It felt, it felt more like him at the very end. Yes. So, so yes, that's, that, like, there's a reason. There's a reason. Y- that. Yeah. The first five minutes of this was just bullshit. And then you get a horn honking and here comes the inner circle. Um, you know, on a gator or whatever those things are, you know, the um, ATV doesn't matter. A- what. <laughs> yeah. And they drive up and they have, um, a big thing hooked to the back and it says a little bit of the bubbly and they have a hose hooked to the top of the, the ATV mm-hmm. gator type thing. And they're like, you know, what, what about a rematch? And they're like, no, no. Like, are you sure you said no? Are you sure you said no? Cause at this point, sorry, Jericho popped up with a big old arm brace on his arm, which yeah. is a total work, but he actually did get hurt a little bit. Um, yeah, he, he did get nicked up. But <laughs> that's not so that. old school. That's like wearing the foam neck brace, and that's yeah. fantastic. That's yeah, so it, good. it was great. So you know, they said no, no. So then they just shoot champagne, champagne all over right, them, and right. like it's a total uh, Steve Austin beer moment. They're slipping, they're falling, everything, and then you know, after being really embarrassed, MJF's like, "You want a rematch? You get your rematch, double or nothing." But, but if you lose, the oh, inner circle oh, oh, breaks right. up forever. Oh, oh, sorry. And then he goes and in, in the in, in the match you had stand, last year. At, in a match you had last year, stadium, stadium stampede. stampede in front of a live crowd. Let's I know. Oh go. my god! Now the live crowd is going to be at Daly's place, which is connected to. So, I don't know. Stay, part of what made Stadium Stampede one so great was that it wasn't in front of a live crowd, and they're able to pre-tape it and kind of you know do that Matt Hardy esque thing to it. You know, yeah, we don't but, have Matt Hardy now, so that helps. So anyway, we'll see, we'll see. But I, yeah, Stadium Stampede two, and if they lose, I think I cut you off there. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. So so if the Inner Circle loses, they break up forever, and they're never together ever again. I mean, you had been saying you want to see Santana Ortiz. Oh, that that's been Young Boy. Young Boy wanted that. Oh, is that Young Boy? Oh. Young Boy, actually, and I agree with Young Boy. I'm, I, I mean, he's not here, so I can officially say that. Yeah, I well, actually well, we, agree with that because I can't do it to his face. We all know. Do this. do not admit that. We, we, we'll, we'll we'll brush it off. We'll we'll set, we'll make something yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, it might be time and then with diamante on her own now maybe a reformation of lax maybe oh 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 
I guess she's not with Eva Lee anymore. No, I, I, I have a thought. We'll come back to it because we have we have a topic we're going to talk about later. I just okay, I'm writing that down because yeah, okay. So all right, after this was a killer ass promo, and it was with none other than the face of the women's division, Britt Baker, D, M, D. I mean, she's so good on the mic. She's so goddamn good. <laughs> she, I mean, she talked so about how how she injured her face. Like, uh, well, sorry, Jr. just th- gave her a softball and she just hit it out of the damn park. Mm-hmm. About how Sheeta her, busted her her nose, broke her nose, had have, and... yeah, had to have surgery. And then Britt's like, "Yeah, I was on the shelf for five months, and when I did that, I became the baddest bitch on the block." And you <laughs> said that t- you said that Jr. You said that Jr. And I'm like, and it's like, oh. and she's like. It's po. It's, I love this line from her. It's poetic that the monster she to create is going to kill her. Oh, and I'm like, oh my god. There's so many subtleties in that. The whole Japanese thing with the and then it's just oh my god. She is so goddamn good. It's scary. Like, <laughs> and and again, for some reason, for four I, years. Yeah, I don't usually get women's shirts because I don't want to be the creepy fat guy who gets women wrestler shirts. It's time to get a DMD shirt, sexy. man. Yeah, she, <laughs> she has got my respect at a completely different level, and I don't care if people look at me like I'm the creepy fat guy. It's like, no, this this woman is legit <laughs> one of the best damn wrestlers I've ever seen. That's why I bought an EO Shirai shirt because I was like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, see, like, w- she has transcended that. Like, obviously, yeah. you know, like, there are other great women wrestlers, but now, but like, wrestlers. she's on this a is, different level. She's on that level. She's, yeah. And <clears throat> she's only, like I said, what, four years? or Maybe it's five now, I think she's been in the business, give or take, you know. Yeah. But, my God, their future. Like, like I said, her and Adam Kidd, Cole, ever have babies. They're going to be the talkingest babies I've ever seen in my life. I'm just saying. <laughs> and they'll be able to do a lot of cool moves. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They'll be, they'll be three-year-olds, flippy, spinny shit, you know, like, like John Mockley's kid, you know. Like yeah. Trying to get... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> they'll be able to do Canadian Destroyers on their dogs. <laughs> <laughs> they'll come home and like, stop doing Destroyer on Fluffy. Go do your homework. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So after this, we did have a throwaway match, 100% a throwaway match. But it was just good. It was just good to see her on TV again because it's been a minute because she's mainly been on dark. And it was Thunder Rosa versus mm-hmm. Jasmine Allure. Um, yeah, it didn't take very long. It was squash and a half. Yeah. Yeah. So it had a weird ending because Jasmine Allure is not very good, but it was a shoulder breaker into a thunder driver. One, two, three for thunder Rosa, but mm-hmm. it just looked really discombobulated right. because this, this allure girl doesn't know what the she's, hell she's been wrestling done. for maybe a year. Like, yeah. She's really wrestling. green. She's very green. I think she's got, she, she's in a uh, Cody school, I believe. Yeah. And she, she has moonlight and mission pro a little bit in order to get her okay. feet wet, which is thunder Rosa's thing. Thunder, it may, maybe, maybe it's one of the roses, either Cody or Dustin's, but she's in one of their schools. So yeah. well, they have the, the joint school now, the nightmare Academy or nightmare well, the factory. Nightmare, Cat, the nightmare factory is Cody's. Uh, Dustin has his own in Texas is something else. I can't remember what it's called. Oh, uh, well he's working on the nightmare factory now. They, they're, they're, they probably own them together. Let's be honest. Yeah. 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 Anyway, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. I'm getting off topic. Sorry. Yeah. So after this, okay. So, <laughs> Ser- well, Serena Deeb's going to face red velvet next week for, uh, as Good she returns to see her to back. Her Good WA to see her title. Back. Yeah. Like she had that bad knee Thank injury. You. So she's a hell of a wrestler. I'm excited about that. Then we get to the shit. I don't even want to talk about so Tony Giovanni standing by with Jade Cargill, which I like. I'm I like her presence. I like her physique and everything. Is she but doing one of these to you? A little bit, a little bit. She's kind of like the all hype train. Thank you. You that's, know, I mean, you finally caught up to my level because yes, I, I mean. She's got some physical. I mean, her physique's everything. She needs a good her mouthpiece. Physique's there because yes. I'm sick of the way like this. That bitch thing is just driving me oh, nuts. Oh, it's terrible. It's driving me nuts. It's almost as bad as Cameron Grimes. Almost. <laughs> wow. Okay, I didn't know you were going that. Okay. Like with the to the moon. Like, dude. For those of you who up. don't watch our uh, our Tuesday show where we do the wrestling roundabout. Uh, J- Jamie loathes Cameron Grimes' character to no end. I love it. He loathes it. So we we yeah. So for him to compare anybody to being on that level, 
it's not good. <laughs> well, I, I'm not. I'm not comparing her. It's just that whole that bitch gimmick. Well, I'm not and saying they, comparing her as a whole. Yeah. But that get you know she, that. Yeah. She literally has to have a solid mouth pe- uh, mouthpiece with her to save it right now. That's where she's at, and I think they're doing it right by having her get a manager because that's what they're teasing, and it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um. You know, Mark Sterling's pitched her. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other people, and she says, I'm, I'm, "I'm still, yeah, I'm still a free agent. I'm still that, that bitch. bitch." It's like Jesus. Well, my thing is like you devote all the. Here's my problem with her in general. They devote all this time to her, without it being wrestling time. Yeah. If you just put her in a match, and then she comes out, she can literally do that exact promo that she you spend, you know. You know, a minute and a half making, you know, editing and do all this stuff, making it all. She could say that exact promo in 10 seconds after a match. Yeah. Let her go out there and, and squash, you know, Maddie Rinkowski or Jasmine Allure or, you know, that at least builds to this character that she is that bitch because she's beating the fuck out of all these, you know, green ass women, you know, mm-hmm. even, though, even though she's green as shit too. But, um, that's what gets me, you know. It's like this is very, this is very WWE Eva Marie, you know. Oof, yes, I'm sorry, it's Black Eva Marie. Don't make that a hashtag because I, I almost regret saying it because it's true. It's true as fuck. It is, and ah, uh, whatever, whatever. Well, Luckily, there's something to save it after. It was, the they, big they different, the the big difference I can tell between her and Eva Marie is in her couple matches, she actually could wrestle and did some good moves. That there, 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 there is that Eva Marie's has got negative wrestling abilities. So <laughs> yeah, and yet she's back. She's only there for one thing and one thing only, and we all know it. I'm not gonna get there, but yes, um, T and A. Um, so that's about it. All right, after that, they do a quick video package um, hyping up Miro versus Darby Allen, which is next. It's Darby talking, you know, driving around Seattle, which I thought was pretty de- pretty cool because I've, I've been around Seattle a few times, and it's a beautiful city. Awesome. Um, yeah, so he, he talks about, you know, where he, he grew up, everything, and he knows exactly who he is, but does Miro know who he is and blah, blah, blah. Talking mad shit on Miro. Like, you know, yeah, you got, you got really deep in his shit talking. I was like, Ooh, <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. So after that, here comes the match. And before the bell even rings, Miro is all over Darby, like oh. stank on shit. Man. And it was just <laughs> on. He's got he was... trunks that have the TNA TNT title belt on them already too. Yes. Yes. I just want to yes. say that before yeah, you get to it. it. It was great, and then he was literally just throwing him around like a damn rag doll, like a rag doll, like he should. And it's a typical Darby Absolutely. Allen match. <laughs> it's it, it's every freaking match, but it's also what Miro should be doing to Darby Allen. Yes. yes. So it it played to both their strengths because Darby Allen usually gets his, the shit kicked out from ninety five percent of the match, ninety ninety five, and he finds some way to win. And Miro just kicks the shit out of people. So it was a match made in heaven. Um, so they're just going at it, and he's throwing them around on the outside. Everything. He finally gets him in. He, uh, Darby doesn't even have his damn jacket off at this point. He finally takes his jacket off and says, "Let's go." They start going at it, and while they're doing that. For some odd reason, Ethan Page goes and talks to Sting, and here comes Scorpio Sky and does a a chop block onto Sting for whatever reason. Um, But they come back later to deal to mess with Sting even more. Whatever. Um, So this match had a lot of crazy shit. I'm just gonna call it out. So at one point there was a coffin drop attempt that turned out that Miro decided, "Oh, I'm gonna catch him." (laughs) <laughs> while he's laying on the ground i'm like yep. jesus like like miro looked amazing in this match he tried he did he went for an accolade earlier and didn't get it or um or acolyte sorry it's no it's accolade um they had some decent o- offense from darby yeah. he did two of his flipping stunners in a row then that's when he went for the coffin drop, and that's right. when Miro caught him. Caught. But mm-hmm. the ending was sick. So Miro, um, you know, Darby has Miro in a, 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 Fuji, a, a Fujiwa armbar, and then Miro rolls free, and then um, 
goes in, does his accolade, and but then typically like he'll sit back and it's just right, a like, modified like it's camel a signer a recliner. camel clutch, yeah. Yeah, it's a signer recliner because it's a little bit higher. But yeah. no, he took it a step further and he laid this on his sick. back, like pulled him on his back, so bent him pulled... in back in half backwards, basically. Darby, yes. that is. And then instantly, like Darby's just out. Yeah, Ref calls it. We have a new TNT champion, and it is Miro. Miro, Miro day. Miro, Miro day. day. Miro, Miro day. day. <laughs> yes. So after that, oh, Ethan God. Page thank and Sky God. Tech staying once more. Dark Order Whatever. tries comes out to make a save because if you've been watching them be in the Elite, they've been talking about how he's been cool with them. And then at, right after that, which is this is something I actually do want to see. This is something I definitely want to see. Lance oh, Archer's music hits, and he just starts mouthing at Miro. Ma- Miro's holding his title belt up. I'm calling it now. Miro versus Lance Archer at double or nothing. Let's go. What did I say about putting the belt on Miro? Why it's such a good idea? Because then you can have feuds like this Lance one. Archer. <laughs> so, yes. Thank God. If... I, if Darby would have won this, this would have been a vastly different podcast, ladies and gentlemen. We would oh, oh, I would have been oh, hot. Oh, it would got been bad. Hot, hot. It would got bad. Miro deserves it. They deserve to move the belt off Darby. Darby been fine doing it, but like we've talked ad nauseum about the shortcomings of doing this every goddamn week. So, thank God. Kudos to Miro. There's no more glass ceiling. Look at him. He's a champion again. So yeah, he deserves it. He deserves it. So that's that's the show. Um, if I'll go ahead and start with my rankings. Yeah, I'm thinking here. <sighs> it's it's close, but I'm I, um, snooze fest. You want snooze fest? It's almost a spot fest. Like it is right there. It's a three point nine. Uh, uh, snooze fest is a two. Squash oh, wait. fest is squash three. fest. Sorry, squash fest. Yeah. It is like right there because this match was really good. The Young Bucks match was really damn good. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what? No, I'm gonna, I'm changing. I'm going spot fest because yeah, spot uh, fest because of those because, matches. Because of those matches and Britt Baker's motherfucking <laughs> promo. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm gonna it's go right s- there. I'm I'm gonna go squash fest. And I'm gonna go okay. I'm gonna go middle there. So I'm not I'm not teetering with it. I'm gonna go middle of it to get a squash fest. I think that. This while this while the ending is what we wanted, I felt like the match was a little. I mean, we saw this coming. We saw he's going to beat the crap out of him. Darby's going to have like a little bit of a flurry. So it was great, but it wasn't predictable. I don't. I, I'm so over the whole like. I love Scorpio Sky and um, what's his what's his nuts? Ethan you know, Page. Ethan Page. I don't love them feuding with Sting. Come on, it's just it's like weird. Yeah, the feuding with Darby is fine. Feuding with anybody else, Dark Order. It's great. Feuding well, with well, Sting is like, who cares? Anyway. They're se- they're setting up a tag team match between those, those Ab- two. Because uh, it's, it's blatantly Sting obvious. Can't, we yeah, because Sting yes. can't go solo right now. Like, And they're protecting him, which is exactly what they need to be doing. They need to be doing. They need, and they need to have him as more of as more of like a, 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 a ancillary figure. But anyway, so, I mean, there's that. Um, Young Bucks, SCU, more than I could have imagined. But... You know, you got the Thunder Rosa squash match. Cassidy Pac, you know, it didn't really kind of, you know, the, it didn't go the way, it, because un- unfortunately, you know, and there were some downer promos like uh, Jade Cargill. So I'll put it right there in the middle. I think it was a good middle of the road. You know, middle high, high, middle high, middle of the road. So. Yeah, and that's where I was. I was a little higher, and then I just remember the Britt Baker uh, promo, and I'm like, yep. It was okay. Perfect. All right. Cool. So you're a little, little bit higher than I am, but we're at, uh, so you're going to go uh, four. I'm going to go with the three on the Squash Fest. Uh, you guys let us know what you think about this episode. Uh, that was Dynamite. So there's a couple other things we want to talk about since we got a little bit extra time to kill here. We don't, we don't have bitch moves from the young boy this week. Thank you. So uh, <laughs> I want to ask you, Jamie, okay. because there's a lot of people on the AEW roster. And there's yes. a lot of people who are a free agent. It is free agent season. Do you think it's good that there's so many free agents out there? Do you think AEW needs any of these free agents? And do you think any of the ones that are out there will sign with AEW? Men or women? 
doesn't matter. Yeah. So there, right now, I, unfortunately, I can't say there's too many free agents because WWE did a good job of doing that. Um, well, they tend to do that. Yeah, and, and but, who they? But it's who they? It's who they drop more than that they drop people. But still. exactly, yeah, yet yeah, Velveteen Dream is possibly going to be on <laughs> Raw. Eva okay. Marie is brought back, but you get rid of the Iconics. Yeah, both of them. So, yeah. so my thing is, I think AEW right now, they could maybe take one of them, one one man, and then possibly, I don't know, two women. Um, okay. They might have a, a relationship in there, but we'll get we'll get to that in a second. I want to talk about the man side first. Um, they, there's so many out there, and it's very saturated. It makes so much sense for Samoa Joe to come to to AEW. But mm. the thing the thing is to me, and you know, please be devil's advocate on this. They have too many people now that they don't have spots for. Like, I think everybody and their mother knows I cannot stand Joey Janela. I just think he is terrible. I think he doesn't fit what they're trying to do. He's not a great wrestler. He's a deathmatch guy. But when he was in that deathmatch, he wasn't the star of that deathmatch. It was definitely Moxley's star of that deathmatch. And I love Sunny Kiss. I think we need more Sunny Kiss screen time. But then you have like these Aaron Solos and and all these other just randos all over the place on AEW. It, it, they're they're saturated. They need to kind of like we when we had the faction comment, I, like you had to have these people out there. But Samoa Joe makes a lot of sense for them to get thrust right into the title picture instantly because mm-hmm. he is that damn good and he equals ratings. I don't care what anybody says. Oh, absolutely. The old TNA fanboy, X Division fanboy in me, I loved him then. I loved him when he was in NXT, and then they just totally wasted him like they waste every NXT talent and, and on the main roster. Yep. But he he makes so much sense there. Now, women-wise, and I, I want to pass it back to you, too, because I want to hear your thoughts. It mm-hmm. makes a lot of sense for Peyton Royce and Billy Kay, or I'm sorry, Cassie Lee and... Uh, She's still Billy Jess- Kay for now. Oh yeah, no, Jesse Mc, Je- Mc- Jesse Jesse McKay, Mc- Cassie Lee, Jesse McKay. All right. <laughs> yes. So the icon, yeah, the icon. Yeah, just call him the icon. I can't remember. It that. makes a lot of sense, and it makes a lot of sense for them to come in as a part of the pinnacle. Yes. <laughs> and I think that is a another shot in the arm in that women's division too. So, and, and I want to talk about that in a second. But well, well what do you before think? we get to the women's division, you know, yeah. so. Here's the way I look at it. Um, I've been long been a proponent, and there's been rumblings about second show, right? If you had a second show, it would fix a lot of these problems. Dark Elevation is good, and it's entertaining at times, but it's it's also more of dark. It's more, almost feels like a developmental show, you know? Mm-hmm. If they had an actual secondary TV show, I think you'd have a lot more room for what they currently have. I think they do need to trim some of it, as painful as to say. Some of these guys that are like he, he could be really good in a few years. Okay, well, go to Japan or go to go to Ring of Honor, and then come back. You know, it's like unfortunately that's kind of where you're at with some of these people. I think that situationally, take them in. You know, I think that. Sting and Christian Cage are there because they have face and name recognition. Mm-hmm. They're there to get eyes on the screen, right? Yes, this, this is a business. This is a, this is part of the game. As, as love it or hate it, that's how it is. Samoa Joe does that for you. Mister Andrade does that for you as well. I think he's gonna go stay in AAA. That's why I don't think he's gonna make he he makes sense, but I don't think he wants that. I I I, I, I don't know. I don't that, that's know. A, that was a great name. I forgot. I honestly forgot about Andrade. Well, I wrote it. I wrote his name down because earlier you made mention. And I'll talk about the women. We'll talk about women in just a second here. So yeah. you made mention of uh, the inner circle talking about uh, Diamante, who's still Diamante LAX on her <laughs> on her Twitter handle. If anybody knows that, uh, and uh, proud and powerful. Who those three were were part of LAX in. Impact Wrestling, if you did not know. Mm-hmm. Um, it makes sense to have them come together. And it also would make a lot of sense if uh, one Thea Trinidad and uh, one Andrade joined them as well. Talking about factions again, this is another faction again together, but that would make a lot of sense. I don't know. I think there's certain people that 
if it's available, you go get it. You have to. If Will Ospreay became a free agent and every every company in the world wasn't throwing money at him, including AEW, they're an idiot. You yeah. know, it's just and, and he's there. Joe is. He knows everybody pretty much on this roster already. Mm-hmm. It makes total sense. Andrade, if he wants to stay in American promotions. That makes a lot of sense too. And then the women, Thea Trinidad, no matter what, she makes a lot of goddamn sense. Bring her in as a manager. You can bring her. She's shown she can wrestle, but she is also even better as a manager, which I couldn't believe because I liked her wrestling when she was in TNA. Yes, yeah, Sarita. She was Sarita. Yes. She was a, a knockout tag champion, as a matter of fact, with Rosita. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she's she's a great manager, and you know, so you can bring her in. That's not going to really deter from anything you have going on either. You know, the iconics I definitely could see as well. The the end of the day, I think that you shouldn't miss on the the men that are available, but they'd be a fool not to try and and boost their their women's division because. Mm-hmm. The state of the women's division in TNA. Let's shift to talk about that for a second. You know? Okay. Yeah. So, state of the women's division in TNA. It kind of okay. I don't want to say is that the pinnacle was uh, Thunder Rosa, uh, Britt Baker, uh, the street fight or unsanctioned match. But what have they done since then, other than set up this? Uh, you know, championship. They haven't done a whole lot. You've had some squat. You've gone back to a single squash match on SmackDown. SmackDown <laughs> on uh, Dynamite two weeks in a row now. Understandable last week with what you had working with it. This week here, you could have done something a little bit more. I felt. You know, they're building up Baker versus Sheeta, but you got Baker Sheeta, Serena Deeb. Um, She's going to be back next week healthy. Thunder Rosa, of course. And then Nyla Rose. Tay Conti's come up. And Jade Cargill? I mean, what do you have beyond that? You have a bunch of green. You got Diamante is good, but she's she's on dark pretty much. All these mm-hmm. other women, they're all on dark. They're on dark elevation. I feel like they need to bring in name value in the women's division to get it more eyes. Because there are some women that are underappreciated, i.e. Diamante, you know, that are just not very recognizable to a lot of mainstream wrestling fans, right? Yeah. But if you bring in the Iconics, you bring in Thea Trinidad, as much as you hate it, you bring in Tessa Blanchard, it's not going to happen. But you know what I mean? You bring in a big name like that, that's, I think, what they really need. You know, they've done. This is this is take a let's rewind the clock a year. <laughs> that women's division a year ago was, it was hot bad. garbage. It was bad. It was it was, it was very bad. It's worse than what Raw's division is right now. Yeah, the best thing that ever happened to them was NWA going on hiatus. Yeah, because then they were able to get some some strong names to come in. Thunder Rosa has became a huge star because of a, her her affiliation mm-hmm. with AEW, not with NWA, yep. which I thought was very amazing. And they've started building around people and getting people built up. Like like you said, Tay Conti when she came on, she was okay, and now that that girl is really damn good. She's really, Anna J when she comes back, she was growing. She's still green, but she was getting good. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, and you got our favorite alien, Chris Statlander. When she came back, like when she left, she wasn't that great, but now like she came <laughs> back, she her body looks good. Like, and she put on some damn good matches. The ones I've watched since she's been back. Yeah. So they have good pieces now. They just need something to push them over the edge. And then they become legitimate and then they become a force. And then the women really want to go there because right now, where do women want to go? NXT. No NXT, matter what. And then impact. Yeah. That's it, right? Which are the and two then- which are the two which are the two promotions that have the the strongest structure and you know lineage of women's wrestling right now. Yeah, and then after that, what? Go to stardom? Because you I mean, yeah. 
You don't want to go yeah. to WWE. I mean, other than yeah. other than NXT, I mean, you'll be buried behind Charlotte Flair. I know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now it's not her show. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, I it, they need something, and yeah, and I totally agree with you. The Iconics make a lot of sense to come over, and Thea Trinidad, all three of them. Tessa Blanchard, she's a racist. She's, and she's Tony not. Khan is she's out not gonna, on that. She's not going to come over. We yeah. know that. But I'm just. Uh, she's a big name, though. She's a huge her, ass. Name. Her her daddy was on TV tonight with them, so I mean, yeah, I mean, some people are trying to say that, that she's coming, but no one like that no, is not, not confirmed. She's not. Nothing. She's, she's she's going WWE. We know yeah, that. We yeah. know that. It, but uh, if a big if a big name came about, if Sasha Banks got fed up enough and left WWE, and AEW did not go out and pick her up, that's the type, that's what sort of stuff I'm talking about. Yeah, you throw all the money. Yeah, like, all. The money. And I'm sorry, the Iconics are no enough. Mickey James, maybe, but she's not gonna. She's gonna. She's gonna go where her husband is. Let's be honest. You know. Yeah, she'll go to NWA. Yep. And then was there, there? I think there was a. You know, I, I don't. I, I can't think of if there's any other free agent women right now that I can think of. So, I mean, yeah, because Jordan Grace just resigned with Impact Wrestling. So, yep. And um, that would have been a big get for them. That would be good, but she did. She just won the tag title, and then so I was like, "Yeah, she's gonna resign." Okay, and then yeah. th- a week later, click, click. So, yeah, because here's the thing: I talked about this in the past, and I hate to dwell on it, but to me, it was the watershed moment for women's wrestling in this century, because women's wrestling as a whole was a very 13 year old boys wet dream right you know bra and panties matches and bullshit and this and that and you mm-hmm. know like jared cling a lot are jerking off in the middle of the fucking ring and shit and tna changed that perception well before wwe had their revolution yeah uh, with the knockouts division with the Gil knockouts of knockouts division yeah. when it started it was kind of a little last thing and then one day out of nowhere they they announced they're having this big tournament and then that whole night was primarily women's wrestling all these women debuting that's where yeah. i saw uh angelina love that's where i saw uh velvet sky for the first time mess and rain for the first time mm-hmm. uh, odb i had not seen before i saw her for the first time i miss odb man oh nice she's so you. great um awesome kong you know you saw all this stuff and it's like holy shit they had this big huge women's you know uh a tournament that led to the beautiful people forming that led to awesome Kong versus Gail Kim, which was the first time women had ever main evented uh, a TNA show was them. I mean, and then you had, you know, solidified. And then there's, you had, and that's why impacts impacts res, women's division is so strong now because they had that foundational, you know, shift, you know, and I think AEW needs to kind of go in that direction. You don't need to go completely bonkers right now and, you know, just completely uproot everything. But if you have, like, an episode of Dynamite where you're making that – like, when they – I was really hopeful that their tag team d- tournament that they were having for the women would yeah. be it. And, and it, kind of, it kind of left me wanting more. And then the whole uh, – um, they, they weren't ready for it. And I think they're ready for that now. Like if they yeah. really did it now – If they really I did think... it now, it would be great. Cause, and then you could have one episode of Dynamite where it's like four women's matches and two men's matches, and it would be unbelievably great. So. Yeah. And if they're doing a tag team match tournament – I can think of a women's tag team that would be an excellent choice. They'd be great. And Jay comes back. You got the Dark Order girls with with Tay Conti. Uh, yes. I mean, you know, Diamante. She needs somebody. Oh, hi, Thea Trinidad. LAX. Yes. You know, I mean, it's. I I think that there's room for improvement. The Miz division is watered down a little bit just because Tony Khan. Uh, they buy, 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 you know, went buying everybody. So yeah, they need to scale back a little bit. It's fine to have developmental talent on dark and whatnot, but the so, women do something with so, the women. So speaking of the men's division too, it's not been confirmed, but there have been rumblings. And, and again, this is 100% rumor <laughs> speculation. So I'm not saying this is fact. And of course, somebody's going to be like, this is fact. They're looking to possibly bring in a trios title. I think that's not a bad idea. With all these factions, a trio's title makes sense. 
It makes a if, lot of sense, right? If it's true, if it's if that's if that's a true statement, which once again, he's not saying it's true, people. That's the internet. <laughs> yes. The internet says lots of things. Internet. But if that's a great idea, I would say. I don't bring another singles title. You don't need to have a cruiserweight or a TV title. You already have a TV title. You know, you don't yeah. need you know, you could do you a, a second show, maybe. It's like a may, maybe a trios title because then you'd have your main title, you have the TV title, tag titles, trios titles. Yeah, and the trios like That's Death enough. Triangle is a perfect example of somebody who could get a trios title. The best friends in Orange Cassidy. That's another trios. example. Like Dark Order. There's so many God blessing six man tags or trios matches. You know that they do. It makes so much sense just to do that. Yeah. I, I mean, they do that in New Japan. New Japan has a trios title. New Japan's got like 26 titles. They have too many titles. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, now they, they got rid of one, which I, and the one they got rid of is like the one that I think that they didn't need to get rid of. Yeah. There's others they could have gotten rid of, you know, a, a, anyway. Um, do you think that a, a, a women's tag titles would precipitate that? Or do you think that'd be a little bit too much for the women? Right now it's too much. It needs that it needs more cultivation and getting mm -hmm. bigger like yeah i i hate to admit when wwe did something right <laughs> and they finally introduced the tag team championship belts for nxt that was the right time granted it was like three weeks too late but it was like within the realm of they have so many women they have everything built up right. it's time for that to introduce you to more women and that's where that's the next step. So they have to get to this pillar. Britt Baker absolutely needs to win the title. And if they don't, we riot. Um, <laughs> but it's just one of those things. Like, they have to have that. Then they may, again, another, or just one big name. One big name to bring it all together. Mm -hmm. And then, boom, that thing is on the map. And is not only people know that it's solid, but people want to watch it. And people want to be there. And that's that's where their next evolution is. Yeah, I'm with you. So let's we see what agree. happens. Um, yeah, I I I do agree. I feel like like I said, it just it needs more because I, I was so high on it a couple a couple months ago, and then I was like, we got there, and I don't, and we have not reverted back to a year ago, like like you said. No, it was when we got into like the 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 warehouse, you know, wrestling. It was bad. <laughs> the women's division yeah. so it's not that bad but it feels like they're taking a step back you know but they're I've, not i know they're not yeah they have, they're, they're, they've kind of settled because they're really wanting to get brit up and when they get brit up and i think that's when shit goes bonkers i really do because she's the mouthpiece and then she runs the roost and then that's when all hell breaks loose i know but because my my complaint my complaint would really only be that this is the final thing I got. But it'll okay, only be that TNA prides itself as a wrestling company. And they announced it and what, you know, kind of their structure. They said equal pay for equal women. If you're a top level talent, you get, you're going to be this. If you're this, you're going to get the same pay as the men, which is great. Love it all to death. Where's the matches to back it up? They're all on dark. They're all on elevation. Yeah. A match on raw, a match on dynamite. I hate a match on dynamite is not good enough. Period. Okay. You get two hours. You can do two women's matches one an hour. One hour. A NXT does that every week. Sometimes they have three women's matches. Yeah. And then the, the women's match is usually a co-main event because it's usually a big name. Like Io Shirai yep. versus whomever. Or and if right you now. And if you, you know. do that, you can have one of them be a squash match like you had tonight. That's yes. fine. There's something Just to else. get Thunder Rosa some, scre <coughs> some screen time. So or some that some should have that should have been Jay Cargill's match, but whatever. It should have. We want to see, but but then you have like a a solid match of Thunder Rosa versus Tay Conti. Tay Conti something and Thunder like and Jay Cargill doing a squash. Yeah, that's yeah. that's perfect. You know, two matches, two matches. To start let's, doing two let's, matches. Let's do two. <laughs> you, Just, you can do it you can do it so let us know what you guys think about this uh free agency women's division aw where do you guys stand on that so you know what? it was surprisingly calm tonight too we were able to kind of converse without any sort of like you know it's just it felt like there was like an air of tension removed from the atmosphere i don't know why yeah yeah i don't or, know why 
Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't hmm, know. Interesting, interesting. Well, well, thank mm-hmm. you, guys. That was our AEW show. Uh, we're going to be back next week, uh, probably with, oh, that young boy. Yeah. Yes. Deep oh, Thoughts. there it is. There it is. <clears throat> Deep Thoughts going to return to you on Tuesday. So uh, we'll be back on Tuesday with our roundup. We actually got a lot of wrestling to talk on Tuesday because Impact's going off. The Impact has a show tomorrow, show tonight, and they got their pay-per-view this weekend. And there's WWE Backlash. I'm not calling it what it really is. Uh, it's going on on Sunday. WrestleMania Backlash. It's fucking terrible. Yes, it is. Uh, so what we got we got extra stuff we'll talk about. One of those one of those pay per views is probably going to be awesome, and the other one's going to be very bad. And I'll let you play uh, guess the guess the pay per view. <laughs> yes. Send us a message on which one you think is going to be bad. Yeah, yeah. Just let us know under siege or or, or or whatever backlash. Let us know what you think. So uh, <laughs> that will be on Tuesday. We'll be back next Thursday with our uh, dynamite review as we inch closer. Is that going to be your last dynamite review? Because Jamie's going on vacation here in a little bit. So um, no, I have one right before that. Yeah, we have two I have the next more two weeks. weeks. All two right, weeks. so we still. We still, got, we still got Jamie here. Jamie's actually going to be missing our uh, Double or Nothing review and the AEW afterwards. He'll be, he'll be going to be at Disneyland, but uh, Disney Disney World. Uh, so yes, it happens. Um, but we will be back next Thursday with our AEW post review. Uh, thank you for joining us. If you're watching us on YouTube, uh, give us a comment down below. Let us know what you think of uh, AEW's women's division. Let us know what you thought of tonight's Dynamite. Give us a shout on Twitter, at Total Spot Fest. I am at JMoney1536. Jamie is... Are you which way? I don't know which way you are because... There's only the two of us. Jamie is uh, at jfaulkner56. Uh, if those of you listening to us, thank you very much. If you want to see our faces, we are on YouTube. Uh, we would appreciate if you like what you see. Tell your friends. Tell your friends to, to follow us out on YouTube or Spotify or wherever. So yeah, hey, 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 our Canadian friends. Hi, our French friends. Hi, our yeah. German friends. Hi, Indeed. you know what? Hey. How about our New York friends and our California friends? We got friends all over the United States. Keep telling everybody about us. If, if you hate us, tell them you hate us because you know what? Even bad heat's good. Like that's I'll right. some Xbox heat. If you hate me, tell me. That's right. All of our, all of our Ohio listeners, I hear you too. Let's go Steelers. Um, <laughs> oh God, damn you. <laughs> that's, for our, that's for our Ohio friends out there. Anyway. Uh, Thanks. Yeah, they're, they're gone now. They're gone now. They're gone now. That's a, <laughs> No, no. They're going to tweet me about the freaking uh, playoff round, lads, what they're going to do. Like, who who won the wild card game last year? Yeah, yeah, you did, you fucking assholes. All right. I'm stopping. I hate that. I, I, I don't mean to call. Jamie, please save me. Take us home. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. So I love you, Ohio. Uh, I just won't love you week three. Ohio is um, for lovers. It's okay. Yes. So anyway, um, if you're not down with TSL, I have four words for you. Miro Day. Miro Day. Hell yeah. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time. Peace.